sing the good news of God, who surrounds us with new life and purpose. Now is the time to sing the good news of Easter. Come and worship the God who loves us. Please join me in the call to worship. May the God of morning joy be with you. May the God of grace be with you. Lift your hearts and voices to God, Example, examples of God's love and hope. We offer them to the one who fills us with life through songs of glad praise to our God. Please stand if you are able for our opening hymn, number 108, Christ is Alive.
we go. Who? Stitchy. Okay. All right. Uh, how many are uh, have ever done magic tricks? Me. You have? What did you do? Card tricks. You do card tricks? Oh, I want to see yeah, some. I do card tricks, a coin trick, and... I do a, yeah, I'd like to see that sometime, maybe downstairs, show me the coin trick. I'd love to see it, because i got to learn. I have a trick with a dollar bill, uh, <laughs> so I'll, I'll show you that too, okay? It, anyway, uh, how, are you good, are, did you do any magic tricks? Yes. What do you do? <laughs> it, it's hard having your sister on the same pew when you're doing a children's <laughs> sermon. Anyway, so what's your magic trick? Uh, usually card tricks. Card tricks? Okay. Like making them disappear or guessing what, what, which one? Well, can you make things appear that have disappeared? Mm. You can? The cloth or the pencil? Okay. Because nobody could see the pencil. Nobody could see the pencil. We can try that later. Uh, <laughs> guess what I want to appear? Stuff that's disappeared. Nothing disappeared. Well, there has been some things that have disappeared. Ta-da! Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's all get together say, wow! Wow, <laughs> Mitch! <laughs> but do you know what's even better? All that was there before. I just made it come out from behind something. So, you know what would even be better? What? If you brought at least one can every Sunday when you come up for children's time, you bring a can or a box or... Uh, a tube of something. How about that? And then you make stuff appear, and the magic is this gets full. You know why we do this? Mm. Why? Mm. To help people. To help people who who need food and and peanut butter and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, all beans Chicken. and all kinds of stuff. What? Chicken. Chicken. Beans. Yeah. He's a peanut butter. Or tuna or whatever. They call it the Hunger Games, and hunger is not a game. Hunger, hunger, hunger is serious. But we're just trying to have fun making stuff appear when we could help. And you know, last year, do you know what you did? We were the church that brought, brought more food than any other church. I can't wait. Huh? I can't wait. We made it a town. I can't wait to make it We made a town. So we can, we can make a town out there. We can build a castle, whatever you want to do. So castle. next Sunday, will you bring, remember that dollar I gave you? Yeah. Okay, bring it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you, can, you can say to people, will you give me a dollar so that I can bring it to help people? And also bring especially a can of something, okay? Will you do that? Okay, thank you. I'll search the house. Okay, search the house. Or, like, go next door, or when you see people on the street, say, can I have a can of beans? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me like I've got three heads. <laughs> Let's have a prayer. Thank you, God, for our ability to help others. Help us to become magicians in a sense that we do what's right and we do what's good and we do what's best for others. All in the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing number four, and I have it looked up in one if you'll help. <coughs>
God's grace, forgiveness, and the hope God offers never goes away. Let us dare to bring our prayers to the one who hears us and heals us as we pray together, saying, God of forgiveness, hear now the confession of our sins. Our greed and our lust for power create enemies where we should not find friends. We fail to offer comfort and aid to those who are afraid and beaten down by the burdens of life. We, we confess that we are blind and willful to the pain and the destruction of our own doings and our well-meaning crusades. Forgive us, merciful one, give us sight to see with your eyes that we may bring hope of peace to our world, beginning with our lives as a carrier. Joy is ours within reach this morning and every moment of our lives. God has come to share new hope and forgiveness with us so we can give back joyous hearts to God. We will give thanks and praise, laughter and gratitude for all the blessings God has given to us. We will offer our hearts and hands, our time and our talent, and love and service to others. Thanks be to God, you are forgiven. Amen. The first scripture reading today is from Psalm 30, verses 1 through 13. Um, Pew Bible, it's on page 418 in the large print, page 852. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let me, let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Our second passage comes from Revelation chapter 5, reading verses 11 through 14. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand upon ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and in, under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped the word of the Lord. It was in the 80s when Pete Seeger sang, followed by the same song some 20 years later when Enya sang it. My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentations. I hear the real, though far off hymn that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear its music ringing. 
It sounds like an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? Actually, those words, while sang by Pete Seeger and Inya, it's a trick question because in 1860, Robert Lowry, the one who wrote Christ Arose, and we looked at a couple of weeks ago, had already written those words. How can I keep from singing? I am not a singer. Well, unless Michael Sue is within a, a <laughs> hearing distance. And I can, I am almost ready for American Idol when he <clears throat> is, well, not quite. One of the scriptures that was read earlier describes a choir of angels. The fact that it occurs near the beginning of Revelation, a book normally considered only to be concerned with end times, must remind us that Revelation was written during a time of intense persecution of the church by the Roman government. Its author had been banished to the Siberia of Bible times, the Alcatraz of the first century, the island of Patmos. And John uses a multitude of code words that common people and those in government would not have been able to understand. But his language, his, his choir metaphor, imagined a choir leading a great worship of thousands upon thousands of people. Remember, his words, his book, were written while in exile during persecution. The songs in Thanksgiving would not normally be a consideration during a season of pain. Would it not be more appropriate to venture to Beale Street in New Orleans where the blues could more appropriately picture and capture life at its worst? A more fitting description of the times being endured under Roman persecution. Or perhaps a visit to a Mississippi found plantation in the 50s when a Negro spiritual would rise above the cotton fields and the soul of a people carried as many stripes as their songs. But here, worship music. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Translation. Easter had just happened for these people as it has for us. Jesus has died and against all odds has risen again. And they needed to view their lives in light of that truth. As the Romans continued their assault of persecution, so the choir tells the story. Lord, we've called out for help. You spared us from the worst, but Lord, you hid from us. What good will it do if we're destroyed? If we're dead, our praise ends. We can't praise you anymore if we're dead. Be good to me, God. Help. And God did turn crying into into dancing. He took off their grave clothes and put joy clothes on them and now they could worship. The word worship is used 59 times in the New Testament and 24 of those times in Revelation. If you're scoring at home, that amounts to 40% of the times that worship is indicated during a perceived time of persecution and hardship. What does it mean to worship? These, per, these verses present the image of moving toward God every day in every way. 
What is your worship like here? What is your worship like on Monday morning? On Wednesday afternoon? John was exiled on an island, but the vision he had was of angels singing choir songs at First Church of Heaven. And they sang songs of celebration on his behalf to keep his spirits lifted up. Psalm 30 projects a similar theme of God moving from the present to the future and then back to the past as we do. God has turned our mourning into dancing. Our tears lasted just for the night. But with the dawn of a new day, perspective can change. Our reality of God changes and our faith is secure. The movement the psalmist encounters is the same as our rejoicing, crying for help, thanksgiving, anger, crying, joy, pride, hiding, dismay, praise, grief, and then joy. The psalmist thought he was settled for life. And then life changed. You hid your face and I was dismayed. Lost, angry, worried. Some years ago, a free Methodist pastor on vacation found herself in intensive care with an anti anaphylactic reaction to medication. A friend knew a priest in town and ask him to visit. He went and after pleasantries offered, I brought oil for anointing and the Eucharist. No, no. If you could just pray, it would be fine. And then she backtracked. What I meant to say is, I want everything you have. Weeping last only for a short time, even if we're reluctant to do anything else. But worship means we are open to worship even when we don't feel like it. Frederick Buechner once said, to worship God means to serve God. Basically, there are two ways to do it. One way is to do things for him that he needs to have done. Run errands for him, carry messages, fight on his side, feed the lambs, and so on. The other way is to do things for God that you need to do. Sing songs. Create beautiful things for him. Give things up for him. Tell him what's on your mind and in your heart. In general, rejoice and make a fool for yourself for God the way lovers have always made fools of themselves for the one they love. Even when you don't feel like doing those things, what is invited from us, even in life's caves, is gratitude, worship, and thanksgiving. In both scriptures, Revelation and Psalms, they kept praying even when it seemed as worship, thanksgiving, and praise were as idiotic as taking a shower in an April hailstorm. For them, life was stacked, but they still prayed and praised. Enemies gloated over them, their situation seemed dire. Cards were stacked to their faith against them, but yet they pray. Keep singing, keep praying, even when it seems our prayers rise no further than the rafters. Here, great comfort is offered to those whose lives are broken. In this passage and during Easter, we are called to redefine what it means to win. Winning is not about those who do the conquering or those who have the highest number on the scoreboard at the end of the game. Victory is given to the wounded and joy is reserved for the powerless. 
If there was ever a Christian who practiced what he preached, it was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Decrying the cheap grace of the German church, he offered what he called a costly grace, a, co a grace that may cost the Christian his or her life. So after Hitler rose to power, Bonhoeffer left his post at Union Seminary in New York and his fiancée and returned to Germany. Soon he was accused of joining the plot to assassinate Hitler, and he spent two years in prison. He was executed by the Nazi regime, regime just 71 years ago yesterday. Just before, two weeks before, the United States liberated the camp. When he died, he remarked to another prisoner, this is the end, but for me the beginning. For he had already said, Jesus Christ lived in the midst of his enemies. At the end, all his disciples deserted him. On the cross, he was utterly alone, surrounded by evil doers and mockers. For this cause he had come, to bring peace to the enemies of God. So the Christian, too, belongs not in the seclusion of a cloistered life, but in the thick of foes. Pete Seeger did not end his song the way that Robert Lowry ended his. Robert Lowry would close, he keeps me singing with these words, No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that refuge clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? How can life keep from praising the one who rose again from the dead and fights for us in our lives every day? May we pray. Call and the challenge is to worship, to pray and praise, and to see our weeping as temporary, and to know that your joy floods to us in yet a short while. Help us to believe that with our hope and with the promise of Jesus who is our Lord and in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's receive our tithes and offers. Kind God, bring joy to those whose mornings are hopeless. 
Feed those whose noontimes are filled with hunger and bring peace to those whose nights are surrounded by fears and worries. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Today our minute for mission will be given by chair of our pastor nominating committee, Andy Hill. committee is uh, forging ahead to give you a little insight we had a uh, kind of a setback we were kind of far along with the candidate and things fell apart that was about late February early March and um, so we kind of took a step back and regrouped but we have um, three candidates we are looking at now we've uh, had second interviews uh, with two of them and we'll um, be interviewing uh, the third one who is kind of a new uh, um, candidate um, for the first time this Wednesday, um, and so and so I think we have a good group of candidates. Um, if things don't work out, we can always go back to the presbytery and uh, get more matches. Uh, but I think we have a good group, and hopefully one of them's going to work out. Um, and you know, Susan McGee has been. Um, very supportive and, you know, uh, told us to keep in mind that, you know, we are a, an attractive church and that we shouldn't be in a rush. We should, uh, you know, try to find the best fit for our, our church. And so that's, that's what we're trying to do. So. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to pray for the Pastor nominating committee specifically in a moment, but before we do, uh, would you offer your prayers, your celebrations, perhaps from other arenas, other places? Yes. My parents are back home in Indiana, so thankful. Have them around again. The Hills are home from <laughs> Texas. <laughs> so thanks for that. Other, uh, Mayor Lou? I just wanted to say uh, how much we enjoyed Michael's uh, concert last evening. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yesterday afternoon. It was brilliant. <laughs> it was grand. Yeah. And we met his family. Yeah. All right, and Michael. Thank you for his yes. coming and helping us so often. <laughs> Thank him for uh, inspiring me to, uh, to sing better, and us all to sing better. Thank you, Michael. Billy. I'd like to continue on that. Uh, we have been blessed for the last couple of years with the presence of Michael, both in his gift as a violinist and as a singer. And I, I think we should ask for God's help for him as he leaves us in a couple of weeks from graduation and goes to USC in, in the wonderful state of California. <laughs> you will be entering the uh, School of Law uh, over there. So, uh, prayers for Michael as he makes that transition. Uh, uh, um, look, prayers for my friend Valerie. She was supposed to get married yesterday, uh, but passed away from cancer in March. So, if you could pray for her fiancé, Mike. <laughs> Others. Oh, over For here. Virginia. Virginia, not well. Yeah, she's recovering. Okay, Virginia is recovering. Okay, in the back. Praise for having duty back, and anybody else that I've forgotten that has been traveling and has returned. Judy is back. Yeah. Judy is back. Judy. I saw Judy. her. Judy. Judy. <laughs> She must have ventured downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. <laughs> Prayers for my mom, please. Uh, my brother called this week, and uh, she is uh, doing okay, but is begin beginning to lose uh, lots of weight, not eating very well. So pray for her, please. Pray for Dick going back to Lafayette today. 
Dick is going back to Lafayette? Yeah, he brought me back here today. I've been gone since yesterday. Okay. I went to Michigan and Lafayette. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We're glad you're back. Yeah. Hey. So glad you are improving, and there's strength in your voice yes, and in your face. So that's an an you are an answer to prayer. As we pray, I'm going to ask our pastor nominating committee to stand, so that we can pray uh, specifically for you as well as for all of these. Would you do that? Don't be shy. <laughs> And not here is Virginia and Michelle. Michelle. So uh, let's pray for these folks and their process, as well as for all that we have mentioned. Where two or three gathered, O oh God, you are present. As songs of praise are lifted, hearts are filled with hope, and our lives are changed because of our hope and our praise. Today we lift to you our pastor nominating committee. We thank you for their dedication since last summer when they have met weekly and have labored furiously and prayerfully and hopefully for the future of this church. Thank you for the future of this church as expressed in the lives of each of these who love this church with a degree that is beyond measure. Thank you for helping them in the times that they face struggle and doubt and question whether what they is, are doing is really worthwhile and for bringing them back to the place where they know and we know that you have already selected the leader of this congregation for years to come and we pray that that match will be made and that they would have no doubt that you are in that process as you have been all along. Touch them with a sense of your presence as well as you touch those who need you in special ways for Mike who lost Valerie, his fiancée, to be his wife. Care for him and his family and Valerie's family as they continue to say why and what next, O oh Lord. We pray for Virginia during her recovery. We continue to pray for Sue. We continue to pray for all who are on our minds and in our hearts and ask that you be great physician. We thank you for safe travels, for Miriam, for the Hills as they have returned from their winter hiatus elsewhere, and for all of our children and our loved ones who are in various places around the globe. Touch them with your power and your hope. We thank you for Michael Sue and for his gifts, his spirit, his life, and we ask in his transition that he be led by the power of your spirit. So help him to know as you continue to show him the way. And show us the way, O oh God, as your people as we offer together that prayer you taught us, as we say as one, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And on page 122, we are going to sing about thine is the glory. Page 122, would you stand for our closing hymn? Thank mm-hmm. you.